Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Volte Nadirata, and, and I'm the clinical director of the cardiology department here at Mendigo Health. Um, I would like to welcome you all for this um, GP program, uh, which will be given in far partnership with the uh, Heart Foundation Victorian Division. So to outline um, the reason why we're doing this, um, well, firstly, uh, what's heart failure and what are we here for? Um, heart failure is based on the latest definition of the European Society guidelines on the diagnosis and treatment of acute and chronic heart failure. Uh, this was the last published in 2016. It's basically a clinical syndrome um, characterized by your typical symptoms of breathlessness, ankle swelling, and fatigue. Mind you though, um, there's a lot of patients who may be presenting with such things and they may not actually have heart failure. But this is your clinical syndrome, uh, cl uh, main clinical symptoms of, of heart failure. It may be or may not be accompanied by signs. Um, the usual signs are your elevated jugular venous pressure, pulmonary crackles and pulmonary edema. And we're going to be discussing a lot of these things in depth during the course of the, 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 the of the, all the discussions during this online learning and also during the, during the night. Um, it is usually caused by structural or functional cardiac abnormality, all of which we're trying to try and discuss and see how we diagnose this condition. Um, but the main uh, pathology is that it results in a reduced cardiac output or elevated intracardiac pressures at rest or during stress. Um, you probably have always been diagnosing and um, calling heart failure as someone who has that poor left ventricular ejection fraction. But things are changing nowadays. And there's even a, a, a middle definition, which we call as mid-range ejection fraction, where the ejection fraction is not as bad as what with Witsim. But these are the ones that you usually see in most of your day-to-day -day practice. And then, of course, those patients whom we have been calling as diastolic dysfunction, patients with normal ejection fraction of over 50%. Um, we don't really use a lot of the natriuretic peptides, but we'll probably be discussing that in depth and also during the, um, the open forum. Um, and there should be at least one additional criterion for the mid-range or the preserved ejection fraction of relev uh, relevant structural heart disease, where there is left ventricular hypertrophy and or left atrial enlargement and then diastolic dysfunction. So you will be hearing a lot of this HREF, HMRF, and HPEF. And these are the new terminologies that you might find in the literature in patients with heart failure. It is a vicious cycle. Um, once it starts, it just promotes another problem and it's like a dog chasing its tail and what we want to do is basically interrupt all this process of heart failure. So um, from um, the ventricular dysfunction, it leads to the body producing chemicals to adapt to the um, changing environment, but unfortunately, up to a certain uh, up to a certain st extent, they're actually quite good. But then they start causing deleterious effects, such as cardiac arrhythmias, more ventricular dysfunction, and then causing vasoconstriction, renal vasoconstriction, and causing all these symptoms of heart failure. So, it's interrupting all this process that we will try, and hopefully we can answer for you during the course of this learning program and even during the day of, uh, uh, during the course. Um, it is a, a, a difficult disease to treat. Uh, once you meet a patient with heart failure, you're probably gonna be stuck with the patient for the rest of his or her life. Um, it, there will be times when there will be, a patient will um, compensate and then decompensate but then it's like a, a, a downhill course. Um, it might not be as a slippery downhill course as compared to a patient with thermal malignancy, but it's just, a, just someone like eating you up slowly, slowly, slowly. And it's, it's really difficult to see a patient suffering from heart failure. I mean, you probably have seen that during your practice. And, and, and this is 
I'm pretty sure everyone can relate that this is how it is in patients with heart failure. It is a big healthcare burden, and in Australia, the number of hospital separations has actually increased by about 26% over the period of about 10 years from 2003 to 2004, and then 2013 to 2014. The average length of stay is about seven days. So this is a huge burden to the healthcare cost. Simple admission for heart failure, this is closer to home now, we're talking here, it's about $3,400, and complex heart failure admission costs over $7,260. This is not counting the other procedures that we are using on all these patients, and of course, the cost of the medical treatment. This is one of the top three admission group with the greatest bed day usage of unplanned admission and the second highest readmission diagnosis group based upon volume. This is based upon the Department of Health data um, in Victoria. I'd like to bring you up to why we're doing this and why we're targeting you as the audience. And the, this highlighted in one of the papers that was published late last year um, looking at the management of heart failure in the general practice in Australia. They looked at about 308 general practitioners. There were three study periods of three months each in between 2010 and 2015. Um, and basically looking at how, the, uh, how, how, it is in, uh, how much patients are, are involved in your general practice and, and, and how many patients um, uh, are, are referred, are looked after, and how are patients being looked after by the general practice community. Um, I'm pretty sure you will be able to relate to this data as well, that although we see patients from as young as about 45 years old, there's always this pattern of really young patients with heart failure. But majority of our patients that you will see are about 75 plus. So, and and quite often, you see these patients who may be presenting and saying that they're just getting old, so they present a bit late. Uh, but majority of our patients that you see is about 75 and above. And this, if you look at the age-specific prevalence, it's about 13.9%. So over 1 in 10, or nearly 1 in 8 patients, or 1 in 8 of over eight, 75 years and above, may have some condition closely related to, if not heart failure. So this is a very, very important thing. And with the, with the community here in Bendigo, um, with, with the aging community in Bendigo, I'm pretty sure you have seen a whole heap of patients with heart failure in one way or another in their presentation. Um, we are heavily involved um, in this thing called the VCOR, which is the Victorian Cardio Cardiac Outcomes Registry. Um, we have been publishing annual reports. Um, admittedly, it's always a bit delayed by about a year because we have to troll and look at the whole data. So the 2016 report is just about to come out very soon. Um, but one of the offshoot of the main Victorian Cardi Cardiac Outcomes Registry is a heart failure snapshot. So we look at how much patients with heart failure are, are there in the community, uh, not only the community, but the ones who get admitted in hospital. We were the first of the pilot sites um, in 2013, and then it has now grown to about 13 hospitals, but we want to have the whole uh, uh, participation of all hospitals in, this, in Victoria. Um, it is conducted once a year, and uh, this year we have just finished, and it, we have increased it from two weeks to about four weeks now. But what I would like to highlight about the importance of the heart failure in our community setting is that the cost of hospital readmission, the rate of, of all-cost hospital readmission in heart failure, causing additional health burden to the community, is about 25.8%. So one in four patients will likely be readmitted in a period of about 30 days. So that's why the role, your role as a community care provider after a patient has been discharged is just really massive and huge. Um, these patients, 90% uh, are actually admitted through the emergency department and mainly coming from decompensation, ischemia, and arrhythmia. 
Interestingly, um, despite all the treatment that's available, the unadjusted 30-day mortality rate based on our, com uh, based on our um, uh, uh, survey is still about 9.3%. 9.3%. One patient, one in 10 patients that you may have treated may still die of heart failure um, even though we are giving them the best care treatment. And, it's a, and it, so it's, it's a huge health burden. As a result, there has been a whole heap of, of uh, um, call from the community. Um, the Victorian um, Division of the National Heart Foundation and the uh, uh, Department of Health and Department of Human Services has always been looking at ways how to improve healthcare. And heart failure being one of the big healthcare burden, together with the whole heap of different things that accompanies it, particularly the high mortality rate, um, there has been a, a, a re-look into how we look after our patients. Um, and this has been um, thoroughly investigated and looked at in what we call us now published as a heart failure toolkit. So you probably will be, get, you will be getting some of those things. Um, and it's a good reading and we can discuss that during the course of the evening program. Um, based on the initial data, again, 98% um, of those patients who have heart failure would have visited a patient at the GP in the last three months. So 98% of all of them would have seen you. So that's how important your role is in the management of heart failure. 77% had visited, or you probably have referred, a patient uh, sorry, a specialist in the past 12 months. A third of them would have been admitted as an inpatient, and 26% had visited an emergency department. So, but look at the amount of the, the high percentage of patients who would have seen you during the course of their disease. So that's why your role in the management of heart failure cannot really be understated. And to make things even worse, Bendigo is around this area, and we are one of the highest um, incidents of heart failure in the state. And to make things worse, all the areas surrounding us are in really dark colors, meaning that the prevalence rate is over 35, one of the highest in Australia um, uh, and definitely in the state. So that's why it is really, really important that we discuss all this matter and tackle this thing head on. Unfortunately, it's not something that we would have to be proud of, but the Laudan and Compaspi region has, got a, has respectively has the fourth and fifth highest rate of heart failure based on the survey in 2013. Greater Bendigo alone is still higher than the state average or the state mean of about 28 per 10,000. We're hitting about the upwards of th nearly 31%. 30.95 per 10,000 uh, 30 10, population. We're going to discuss this thing um, during, the, during the, um, this, the, the evening program, uh, but this is the main and diagnostic algorithm for con congestive cardiac failure. And most of those patients will be presenting in your clinic with um, suspected uh, um, symptoms um, including shortness of breath, fatigue, and bipedal edema. And then, of course, you will be at the forefront of this clinical history and clinical examination. And then that's when you start referring for echocardiogram, then subsequently for um, um, collaborative care on patients with heart failure. If you look at the, um, at the rate of functional classification, when they get admitted, they get admitted when, they, when the functional class deteriorates to about class three and four. And then when they get home, they go down to about class two to three. If you look at the, the data that I showed you earlier, this is mostly what you see in your rooms. So, com so basically very, very similar to the ones that we have seen on patients weak or outcome on discharge as compared to when they get uh, when they are in the uh, they get admitted for heart failure. So basically, what we see here 
is this is the one this is the profile of patients with heart failure in terms of their functional classification um, on your day-to-day -day community practice so once again as you compare that where there is most class 3 during the time of the hospitalization by the time that they go home there's almost just equal um, class 2 and class 3 but this is really what we would like to prefer and preferably even down to class 1 so that means improving their functional capacity I think we would go we're going to discuss all of these things during our um, evening program and how to uh, properly look at into the um, uh, functional classification how to assess them because um, a lot of our treatments are based on this thing um, also just to highlight the, the your role in, in, in management of heart failure. Whereas the hospitalization for acute episode of heart failure is about 44%, the ones that's occurring in the GP referral, out of those 44% that were admitted, is about 41.7%. So they may be presenting to your rooms, they will complain of heart failure, they don't really go to emergency department. Most of them might be admitted through your rooms, then you may either send them directly to emergency department or direct admission or go to a specialist and then subsequently to your room. So your role in picking them up is just enormous. Don't want to put any pressure on you, but that's the reality is that's what's happening. Um, what's disappointing though is in the community-based heart failure management program, I think it's underutilized and that's why we have invited representatives from our community-based heart failure program um, to talk to you about what we can offer to all of you, to all our patients, heart failure patients in Bendigo. Because this is, this is the Australian survey and very similar to this, I can, as I can attest that we're underutilizing the service that's available in our community. And look at that, it's just 26.6%. 17 of 64 patients surveyed was referred to community-based heart failure management program. So there's really an, ex and, and there's a it's available. It's, 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 an, it's an, a do doorstep, it's at the tip of your fingers. And we can utilize this service. So um, once again, in partnership with the National Heart Foundation, the Bendigo Health Cardiology Department will be offering this program, uh, which is our main aim is really to improve heart failure management in, in, in services across um, the general practice. Um, we, the main program outline will, be, will involve the online learning, which is you are watching currently, and then there will be the evening program, which is happening on the 1st of August. Um, we will be looking into the non-invasive imaging studies, cardiac catheterization, and hemodynamic studies, which will also include um, invasive physiologic study. That's when you use pressure wires and to assess whether a patient requires treatment. Um, going back to the non-invasive studies, we'll be looking at um, your how to interpret the reports of your transthoracic echo, stress echo, um, and also whether you will be um, inclined to do other imaging modalities. Now, um, we'll also look at revascularization out, um, options, inclu and inclu uh, plus the heart valve interventions, um, because these are some of the causes of your, pa of your heart failure, and if they are correctable, we should correct them, and then the cardiac rehabilitation and the community program. Um, during the night, during the evening education program, um, we will be discussing uh, the um, acute heart failure management, um, chronic heart failure medical therapy, which you will be seeing most in your practice. We'll also discuss um, device therapy and management of atrial fibrillation, which are very common problems in patients with heart failure. Um, and we do um, provide a big um, uh, pacing program here in Bendigo. Um, and then the um, a a patient reported outcome project that we are about to commence here in Bendigo as well, once again in partnership with the Heart Foundation, um, and then we will have some case discussion. So once again, I invite you and um, thank you very much for um, um, watching and um, hope to see you on the night. Thank you.